So, we are going to begin at perhaps the best entry point, which is understanding hierarchies. Hierarchies, or parenting, is one of the fundamental aspects of rigging, which needs to be understood fully and exploited properly if you're going to achieve anything in rigging. Put simply, hierarchies are all about how things are parented together, and we'll demonstrate these basics with just a couple of nulls, which we can see here in our viewport and also in our scene editor. Basically, a hierarchy is something of this nature, where items are parented together in a tree-like structure, and you can think of this, or indeed should think of this, as attaching things together, um, just as you might in the real world. Here we have N1 at the root, and here we have N2 below it. You might think of this, for instance, as a person in a motor car. Here's the car, here's the person, and where the car goes, the person goes along with them. They are stuck in it, or on it, or whatnot. As such, when we select N1 here and move it around, all of the other nulls come along for the ride, because they are children of this root or parent null. The same, of course, with rotations. The next item in the chain, N2 here, will move all of the items that exist below it in the hierarchy, because it is their parent, whilst, of course, leaving the N1 unaffected by their motion. Here, where we have N3 and N4, which are siblings of one another, both of those go with the N2, but themselves have independent motion. These are the end of the hierarchy, the end of the chain. Setting up hierarchies like this, parenting things together, it's um, pretty simple. There are a couple of ways to do it. First of all, here in the scene editor, you can just drag things around. If I grab the N4 here, and I drag it, you can see this white line that appears beneath N3 there, and you'll notice it has a couple of positions, further out and further in. Further in, like this, sort of leaves it where it is, or rather it will reorder the items. This will be easier to see if I add a fifth. There we go, N5. I'm just going to drop that into the hierarchy. You'll see that when the line is under the little object icon, this reorders the hierarchy. You see that nothing's the tree structure here isn't changing, it's just the order of the items in that tree that is changing. And that's the order that you'll get when you use the up and down arrow keys to select through items, like this. So that allows you to reorder the selection order. When the line is out here and coming under the name, that lets you parent, and this creates a hierarchical chain, just like that. We can see here that the N3 has of course become a child of the N5, and as expected, we have this movement of N3 when moving N5. The other way that you can alter parenting is to go into the motion options for any item, and of course you've just got the parent item look up here, and you can just choose a parent including none, or in Lightwave 11.5 here, just hit the X, and that makes the object a scene child. So its parent is effectively the world space here, or it has no parent, whichever way you prefer to think of it. They're more or less the same. The other tool that's available, which can be handy instead of scrolling big lists in Scene Editor, obviously here we only have a few items, but in big rigs you can have an awful lot going on and dragging things around up and down can get a bit confusing. And of course the lists that you get here can become very long indeed. So the other option that we have is the Add Genoma Motion, or the Genoma Motion Manager, which is a bit oddly named because it has nothing to do with Genoma really, but still. Um, but you can assign various options like you would in the Motion Options panel here, but with simple viewport selections. So for instance here with Parenting, if I wanted this N5 null to become the parent of, let's say, the N2, then I would select the N5, choose Set Item, which is a bit unusual of a name. You'd think Select Item would be better, but anyhow, there you go. You then select the item that you want to become the child, and hit Parent. And as you can see, the N2 has now become a child of our N5. You also, of course, need to go back to the N5 and then unset the item. You'll notice that this item selection null, which is used for referencing, has appeared there, so you really need to get rid of that. But that's another quick way of doing parenting when you have 
very long lists of items going on in your scene um, and traversing or navigating is getting a bit a bit crazy and you find it easier to just to do things directly in the viewport. The last thing to take note of in all of these parenting shenanigans is this guy parent in place over here and what that does when it is turned on is to hold an item in place when it is parented. So let's look at our N4 and our N3 here. Okay, I'm going to take the N4 and just parent it off to N3 and you'll notice that nothing happens. It stays still. It doesn't go anywhere. And of course we've got our parenting relationship in place there. With parent in place off, however, we get a different behavior. If we look at our position for our item here, it's positional coordinates there. Um, you can see that it has values. Let's just set it something nice and simple, shall we? So it's a nice round number like that. When I'm parenting it with parent in place on, you'll notice that as I parent it to another item, those numbers change because relative to this item, it's now in a different position. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. The point is here, as you can see, when things are reparented around with parent in place on, they stick where they are in space and their position values update accordingly. If we turn parent in place off now, then when I come to parent this over to N2, what you will see is that the item jumps, but the values remain unchanged. So how you should think of parent in place is that with parent in place on, the position of an item being parented remains unchanged. With parent in place off, then the values that are recorded for the item's position and of course rotation remain unchanged. And so it will update to that position relative to the new parent. Now, all of this is nice and simple, and I'm sure that for many of you it's quite elementary. You're, you're used to parenting and, and these kind of hierarchy tree structures here. However, hierarchies are a very important thing to have a really good understanding of when doing any kind of rigging. And here's the reason why, because all rigs at their most basic have to exploit hierarchies in order to function. You should think of the structure of your hierarchy, the shape of your tree, as the fundamental starting ground for the entire rig that you are building. Before you come anywhere near IK or constraints or anything else, the hierarchy is the fundamental tool which everything else is built upon. It is the superstructure, and it can be used as a tool in a way of itself simply through exploiting and designing its structure in a way that befits what you are trying to accomplish. So here is a great demonstration of how hierarchical exploits can help you out. Um, this is a nice simple IK leg here. Um, I move the ankle null that I have here selected and the leg does its you know leg stuff. And don't worry if you don't know anything about IK or all of that for the time being, that doesn't matter. What is important here is simply seeing the structure of how we put a hierarchy together. What we can see initially from this, even though it's great, I've got this one point and that allows me to manipulate the leg like this, is if I want to start doing ground contact for a walk cycle or whatever else, um, I'm in a bit of a, a problem situation. You know, I want to pivot him up on his toe here, then I've got to sort of raise the ankle here and I've got to sort of pitch the foot down and sort of, you know, move around and counter animate um, the two together. And that's a time consuming and quite inaccurate process. In other words, it's a real pain. What would be much better would be if I had some sort of a control system that managed these contact points for me. And the most simple form of that is something that's known as the reverse foot rig, which we will see in more detail later. And we'll only take a basic look at now. The point of it is that it is working via a purely hierarchical exploit. It has nothing to do with other tools or controls or anything else. Its root structure is just a hierarchy. So let us add a null. I'm just going to call it the heel, because that seems like a good name for our purposes here. And I'm going to pop it over here at the contact point of the heel. What I can now do is take my ankle null, make it a child of the heel. And by grabbing the heel, I can manipulate my leg just as I was doing before. But I also now have a contact point. 
I can rotate the foot up from this point of contact at the heel and the rest of the leg responds because the ankle is a child of this. How about if I wanted to come up on the tiptoe? Let's add another little null. We'll just call it toe. Pop that little fella just there at the contact point of the toe. And I'm going to now take my heel and make it a child of toe. So now when I want to move the whole leg, I can do it from the toe. And when I want to pivot him up, I can do it from here, like that. And similarly and secondarily, still pivot him off from the heel contact point, just like that. I also have options about which way round these can go. As we have it here, the toe is the master of this whole little chain. Maybe it should not be. Maybe what we should have instead is the heel being the master, the ankle of course being a child of the toe, but then the toe being a child of the heel, and that gives us the heel at the root of the whole thing, moving the whole thing around, and the toe as the secondary item in the chain. Why would we do it this way round rather than the other? Well, think about how we walk. We're setting up a foot to be used in a character that's going to move. It's going to walk around and stuff. How do we walk? We walk heel to toe. We come along with our heel. We first impact that upon the ground. Our foot goes down flat. And as we move forward, we rise up onto our toe and come off. And this starts to get into topics of rig design and creating things that help with the kind of motions that we're trying to create and so on. And again, we'll see more of this later. The important thing to take away here is that this entire control structure is purely a hierarchical exploit. And thinking about how you structure your hierarchies, which order things go in, what's parented to what, will be fundamental to getting the most efficient, clean, and easily animatable and intuitive rigs that you can build. Also, if you would like a little bit of follow-up information, um, then have a look here on Vimeo for the Gorilla CG project. And take a peek at these couple of videos here, which talk about hierarchies in a non-application specific sort of way. It's mostly the same sort of stuff that we've already seen here, obviously without the Lightwave interface and specifics of control, but gives you just a little bit more additional examples if you might find those helpful.